<laughs> okay. Guys, today we're going to speak about Cousteau and uh, so the guys that helped me with this presentation, they're not uh, connected right now and it's uh, Maher from Production IT, Adil Dar from Microsoft, which is a principal data scientist and I myself uh, from user data. I'm with the company for two years, I'm crazy about Ebola. I've been developing software since the age of 13. Here recently I've added this sentence. I learned that in big data, data visualization is key. And enough about you. Let's talk a little bit about you. You came up early this morning and I appreciate that and thank you very much. I think that you deserve an applause for that. So thank you. Can you can if you hear it means that it's evident that you really care and we and you understand that we're in it together and this tool will help us to get insight. Easy. So again, welcome and I want to take this opportunity to tell you that I'm really into knowledge sharing and people that know me uh, know that I mean it. And if you feel that there is a subject that you want to learn or you want to teach others, I'm here and I'm willing to help and to take part of it. So this is my uh, I'm, my voice calling out. If you want, you can collect it, and I will be happy to to work with you. Today I'm going to get you uh, some information and value, how to run to stock queries, dashboards, alerting, and a little bit of data science for those that are interested in this subject. So. Let's begin. So, if I will talk about Cousteau, it's like a combination of BigQuery, Kibana, and Jupyter together. And you know these tools, and I will show you how those all things come up together. Last Friday, I was uh, getting ready to get to, into bed, and I took my cellar phone, and I went into Cousteau here, and I looked on some HTTP errors graphs and what i saw is that there is a downtime right now i will real i will continue to talk about this true story moving on okay so returning to this slide now now really let's begin gusto is a combination of bigquery which is a database with tables functions scripting you name it okay join union this is what you would expect from a database. Uh, this is what Custo will give you. Kibana has its fast search, its graphs and dashboards and alerting. We have this in Custo. And Jupyter will give you the ease and, and, uh, and, and the nice experience of notebooks, a place that you can keep all the information from end to end. Why Custo? Because it's a replacement for Kibana. It has a wow effect, I will show it to you. And it's easy to learn. By the way, this is how Microsoft sell that. And what I say, I want to add to them that it's all new for everybody. It's a new, it's a new product. We can learn it together. Now, this is rare when we have an exciting product that we can learn it together, right? And this is from the presentation of BigQuery, that queries cost money. You know that, right? So in Cousteau, it doesn't cost money because we already paid flat in advance. So if you use it or not, it, it will cost the same to Tabula. Okay? So what's in it? I'll, I'm returning a little bit back because I'm not sure how much you know the usage in Tabula of the HTTP. So I will share with you a few steps. So which data is in Cousteau? So first thing, you know we browse the internet, right? You go to USA Today or Bloomberg or somewhere where you have Tabula, and you see this page. Usually you don't see this page because it's in Hebrew, but we see this page, and then we see Tabula. You see Tabula feed here, right? Let me see. Okay, where is that? Yeah, you see Tabula feed? Okay, next thing, if you open the developer tools, you will see this wonderful screen. And the screen will show you uh, the request URL and other 
parameters that you send towards tabula. So you see actually the traffic. If we will look inside one of the sites that uh, contain tabula, for instance, USA Today, and you will filter to, to see all the traffic to tabula.com, you will see plenty of traffic coming into tabula. Are you this? Can you raise your hand if you're okay with it? Thank you. Okay. This is what yes. you're getting from Tabula. Okay, the architecture. These are the logs, and we send them to Azure. And Cousteau is hosted in Azure. Azure is Microsoft Cloud. Then we have web interface to query this information, and we have API to get a programming API into it. Clear? Yeah. Thank you, Edward. That you're nodding, that I'm understood. So I I, I mentioned in the previous slide uh, the word CDN. I want to make sure that everybody knows what CDN. CDN is a content delivery network, right? That's the initials. But it actually means that all our HTTP requests and response get actually cached into this this CDN. Okay, this this idea of CDN. So your request, HTTP request, it goes into Fastly. Into Fastly, they have 50 sites, 50 server farms. And this request getting to our seven data centers. In addition to the to this, the request information goes into Azure, right? So all the information that we see, Azure see, Custo see. So we have a lot of information, and now it is accessible. This is all thanks to production IT. They made it possible. Now we have this visibility that we never had before. Now I can see everything that only production IT used to see. OK? Now let's see the power. By the way, before talking about the power, let's talk about sizes. we all in the big data industry, right? So. Our biggest database to, it holds 250 terabytes for 30 days. And if you will see, I divided it into hot and cold. Hot, you will get fast results. Cold, you will have to wait. So when you run your queries, try to look on the hot data, on the cache data. Is that clear? OK. <laughs> this is how it looks like in the UI. You see database, icon, and then a table, table, table. OK? Moving on. So let's summarize the takeaway so far. It's a big database. It holds our HTTP request. It has hold and cold uh, aspects of the data. OK? By the way, anyone using Custo right here? No one, right? You do? Good. So let's move on. That's the UI. I will move with you, but I need your eyes on the on the on the on the presentation right now. Just if you can turn your eyes just just for once. So this is the select cluster and database area. Here you can you have tabs. Here is the documentation, settings, run, recall, export, import. This is a nice place. You need to remember it. You can have a link to your uh, to your uh, query from here, a deep link. This is where you put the query in. That's the statistics output and pivoting. I will give you one second to take a look. OK. Now I want to talk in a special place in the page. You see this area? That's the documentation. If you're running into troubles, you need to click on this icon. And what you will get, you will get a reference, but it's not good enough because you will need another click. You will need to click on the query language you see here. And then you will get to the actual reference. Make sense? OK. For instance, the string operators, Microsoft added like 20 different string operators, just for comparison. 
So you will need to use the manual because they have a lot, a lot of information there. So if you talk about the language, it's a new language. <coughs> you can ask me why did they didn't use SQL? Because I think this language is better. The idea is a statement, semicolon, statement, semicolon. This way you can run several statements at once. And then you need one tabular expression. Not tabular expression, but tabular expression, okay? It's a different tabular. And it's like it's like Java streaming API. I will show you. For instance, if you will do select star from dependencies, in KQL, you will write dependencies. Simple, right? Let's move on. If you want to join, you can join. If you want to use having, you don't need to use having because it's a fluent API. You will use where, again. In SQL, you need the both, right? Where and then group by and then having. In KQL, you, you use again and again the having because it's a string. You get, you get what I'm saying about KQL? Okay, so, by the way, can I ask the audience the question? Are you into it? What is better performance, union or join? Union. Union is faster, right? Yeah. Union just appends to the end. Join, right. need to do something smart to join. But union is just appending. So always prefer union. Okay? okay. Moving on. Yeah, sure. If you're really, really into SQL, you can write it everything in SQL and use the word explain. It will produce for you the, the right KQL. But I, 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 don't advent, I don't advise you to do that, okay? But it's, it's, it's an option. We will now move to examples, okay? The first example would be to get a count. So you write the name of a table. You use the pipe and then the operator, okay? So after 30 seconds, you will get this number, 603 billion, 603 billion uh, rows of information because it's a table, okay? Next, why had I added this thing? Can anyone help me with that? See the example again. I ask for the table and then I ask for a count. Is it good to do that? No. Yeah. I use the whole table. It just went on the 30 days, hold and cold. If I want to do things fast, I need only how many days? Three. Three. Yes. Three days. Right. What's the performance difference? It's a disk versus memory. Okay. So now if I ask for a go two days or one day, it is it is a returning from less less than one second. Okay, you see the difference, right? Thirty times faster. Now, the next thing I would do, I would ask for traffic for certain publisher. So I will write the publisher, the publisher name field with the value. Simple? Okay. It took it, it took it 47 seconds to answer. So there are some queries that take time. Don't expect it to be super, super fast, everything, but it's quite okay. You can wait 40 seconds to get an answer, right? It's not like a big deal. Next thing, I want to see a, a sample of the data. This is very, very useful. So I take only five minutes because I don't care. I, I want to tell you that every time that I add something new for you, I will write it in yellow. Okay, so you will understand what I'm what I'm want to show you. So 
I'm asking where timestamp greater than a go five minutes. A go is a function that returns a time, right? And then publisher name field equals this value, and I'm taking five. You know how what's the similarity for SQL? How do you do in SQL take five? Limit five. Limit five. Thank you. So this is what I will get. That's the results. And these are the information that you will usually have, right? Go, refer, time. Any questions so far? No. Any um, query that we can see what what columns is available in the current table? Uh, Benson? Yes. Yes. Benson, we have an operator named get schema. So you write the name of a table, pipe, get schema, and you have everything. Yes, thank you. Okay. Next, show you the group by. So now I am asking for tier C access, where time step last hour, summarized by a field, geo country, here. And then I want to have the top five by count descending. Note the semicolon. I'm sending two query statements in the same time. But now I'm doing summarized summarization according to action. Are you ready? Let's give it a go. Run. Five seconds. One result, second result. Mm -hmm. Nice. I get group by action. Okay, moving on. Now I want to render my information as a table. No, as a pie chart. I'm doing the same query by give country in the last hour, but now I want the top five graphically. Boom. This is amazing. This is really cool. Yeah, very cool. Now, for people that are using uh, Jupyter, it's it's normal, right? John, do you agree? I agree, yes. For <laughs> <laughs> people just doing SQL, this is pretty cool. <laughs> now, if you want... In Jupiter is not one line. Okay, wow. Yeah. This is the wow. I forgot. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <laughs> now, the next thing would be to do it as a column chart and then as a bar chart, which is this lady here is my mentor in data visualization. Her name is Bella Gutierrez. And she says that the horizontal bar is the best one for the human eye because you can you can have the relation and it must be sorted. So if you consider a pie chart or a bar chart, I strongly favor the bar chart. Okay, because she says that pie is for the bakery. <laughs> <laughs> Now alert, important stuff. If you can give me one second of your attention. Just a second, I'm just, I need some colder atmosphere here. Okay, I need your attention because this is important. So we saw the group by. Now I will group by according to buckets of time. See, you see TRC access table, last 10 days. Summarize count by bin, I'm creating buckets of 30 minutes in a timestamp, okay? And I'm rendering a time chart. 
what what is so interesting about the time chart the x axis is the time right so that's the traffic to tabula on a graph and for those guys that uh, like black the cool guys you have it in black <laughs> Moving on, seven, seven, and last example. Okay, this hey, is Tom. like um. Oh, could you go back to that last query? Uh, certainly. Whoa. So, so what is bin in this uh, in the query? You say summarize count by bin. What is bin? Okay, bin. The word in English bin means like a basket, right? Uh, yeah, I'm creating baskets of 30 minutes and I'm counting the lines in each bucket. So I'm taking the 10 days, dividing them into 30 minutes buckets. How many buckets do I get? By the way, it's arithmetic. Can somebody help me? 48. Look here. Okay, Chris, are you with me? I hear you. I no, but just... you do you get me? No. No. What's the forty-eight one have to do with the bin? One hour is two buckets, right? Thirty minutes and thirty minutes, right? Ah. So I divide 10 days oh, into 30 minutes buckets. Okay, within that time period. All right. Please ask. I'm all, I'm all, I'm all here for you. I Don't am. be shy. I I, please. So you said, so the bin query is the timestamp of 30 minutes within that 10-day time period. Right. Cool. Same page. Cool. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we call this thing a time series. Cool. Okay. Another question. So, so, sorry about Please. that. Yes, Benson. So the bin uh, function, uh, we can apply to uh, any other um, uh, data type. So, uh, so timestamp is already recognized as as uh, time. So, uh, can you give give us an uh, example of using bin or other data type, and how how do you use it? I can do it offline. You can send me an email. I will do. I will share it with this forum. Okay. Okay, Benson. Forgive me. I forgive you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, next thing. What do we see here? We ask for the last three days, which is hot, right? Hot. Uh, then it starts with this, and then with that, and then has JS in it. And then I extract using this regular expression from this field into this field. Am I extending the table with one column? And then I'm projecting. Projecting is to minimize the whole table to one column that I just created here, right? And then I summarize the, the count of the lines by the value of this JavaScript file. And then I'm taking the top 1,000. And you can see here that it displays all the downloaded files from Tabula with the various versions. I never knew that. When I asked the guys that are owners of this JavaScript, they told me that they know it. Their names are Adi Dan and Michael Dragetsky. They know that, but now I can know that because this information is available to me and it's very, very easy to get it. You know what? That's the point I want to show you, that until now, it was hidden somewhere, the information. Now it's up in the open. You can see stuff that you never saw before. Okay. Now, are you ready to a complex example? Yeah, ready? Good okay. ready. Okay, thank you. Udaya, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So the true story from last week, it was about actually front page. 
what what happened? I saw HTTP errors increase, and I summarized by data center, and then I found I want to find which action had, yeah. is causing the problem, and then I added a, a union with a normal traffic because I wanted to see if the problem happened because of heavy traffic. Okay. By the way, is John V here and Daniel? John is in on the call, but he's dealing with PD right now. So he said he's watching. He's watching. Okay, so they were they were with me on this item. So first thing, you see the spike of the errors? I'm accessing the TRC errors table. Only errors. It took me it took me two seconds to see the errors. Okay. Next step, I want to see which data centers are suffering right now. And I asked, Benson, this is for you. I asked to summarize according to two formulas. One is the timestamp bin, and the other one is the server region. Now I have several time series. You see several lines on the same graph? And you can yes. easily see that US, that is New Jersey and Chicago suffer the most. This will help production IT to wake us smarter and give us more information. And they will know better who want they do they need to wake. Now I told you that it's better to to I have a trick here I want to show it to you. I can add a where clause after the, the group by the summarize, and I can see only places, data centers with a lot of errors. You see, more than 50K. So it actually gave me US, which is New Jersey and Chicago, in less than two seconds. Okay. Impressed? Oh, hey, yes. Now I want to see the action. <laughs> Only in Chicago and New Jersey. And I do see that it's the get action, notify click, notify impression, page structure. These are all page view events. So in this point, I contacted John V and I told him, hey, we have a downtime here. Now, next thing, Daniel told me, hey, maybe it's because of high traffic. We're not sure. Let's, let's add some uh, machines. So what I did, I did this. I did a union between the errors and the normal access. You want a few seconds to take a look of it? Take a look, take, take a look. And if you have any question, ask me. Okay, we run it. Uh, I have a question. Yes, Gabe. <laughs> Hi. In the in the project, when you put tag equal error, you're also doing filtering, or you're adding a new no, you're actually adding a new column, right? You are right, Gabe. As always. Just ninety nine. Okay. Ninety nine. <laughs> Okay, now you're really right. So now let's go over of the output. <laughs> okay, let's do it together. Uh, Chris, uh, Andrew, if uh, guys from LA, you can stop me anywhere, anyway, anytime. Okay, this is the timeline. We start. This is the timeline. We start with low errors, normal traffic, right? We continue. We see at this point the errors rise and the normal traffic rises. This is interesting. Here I contacted here I contacted John. It took four hours and he fixed it. John and Daniel fixed it. Here. Errors gone. But notice that the traffic also came down. So the errors caused the traffic 
to our servers to rise. Do you have any clue why? Did you refresh one? I think it's a retry, right? <laughs> so we learned from this that when we have errors, we have a higher traffic. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is what was meant to be, but this is the actually what is happening. So what we saw that a root cause analysis using Cousteau only, I found the team, I found the time frame, and it was like it took me five minutes because this was a long one. You see, 217 seconds, but it's a 10 day request. So, if you want to summarize this takeaway messages time, Cousteau has fast query capabilities. It can create graphs. It help you, it will help you find root cause, traffic sampling, insights, trends, and you it can help you validate the integration between, for instance, newsroom and the front page of somebody, right? Because you will get the the, the front page events, right? So you can see the actual traffic easily. Maybe not you, the R&D, but maybe the people, the professional services that are doing that, right? We're done with the technical part. Now I want to share with you, and don't sleep just yet, okay? Because this part is about knowledge, knowledge sharing. Now I have a lot of knowledge. How would I share that with LA? So I think brain is a good place to share. What I've done, I've done here, I created a nice page because sharing is caring, right? And I created two sections. One is for your team's wisdom. If you find nice queries, please write it down here. And if you have personal knowledge that you want to share and keep, you can also write it here. So everybody can have a notebook of its own Every team can have a notebook of its own. Let me show you a few notebooks that we have already. You see? Credits to Tabula News. You know what's Tabula News, right? It works with you. This calculates the response time in percentiles. Now I will show you live demo how it, how it feels to go to Brain and run a query in, uh, in Cousteau. Are you ready? I need your, I need your eyes here for, a, for a one minute. Okay, ready? And now I'm going to Google writing brain, crawling to Cousteau, going to the notebooks, Tabula News, scrolling to my favorite wisdom, running click, it opens Cousteau, loading, runs the query real time. After three seconds, we got this. You think that it will be valuable to you to add such information in, in Brain? I, yeah. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Good. Good. Yeah. I will help you. I created a front page newsroom notebook for you. Who would be the first? OK, that's another example. This example, Benson, maybe you will be interested in this example. I'm action, actually asking for recommendation request for, from an unknown publisher. I'm adding a column. I'm decoding the percent 20 out, okay, URL decoding. I'm parsing the JSON that I got. I'm extending, but now with the with the field from JSON. I'm projecting. I'm taking only what I want with the JSON field per publisher, and then I'm getting the top 30 by count. So you can take your request, parse it, and add it to the table dynamically. That's and if you click on. here, it will just run. Benson, you have a question? I should start adding that for Melbridge also, because uh, some client has integration issue, I can see it right away. 
Right. So if you can add in a, in brain the Mailbridge notebook, it will be great. Okay. So meeting like this create a community. I want this would not be the last meeting, but if it, this would be the last meeting about Cousteau, we can we still have this right. So I really invite you to add yourself to the Cousteau channel, and if you have tricky questions and uh, difficult questions or complex questions, you can always tag the Cousteau mentors. Cousteau mentors are people that willing to help. They're not the masters, but can work with you about queries and visualization. So the takeaway messages here is use Slack and Brain to share and document your, the, your usage because you will learn from my notebook, for instance, maybe things that will interest you. Next thing, I will show you dashboards. And I personally prefer alerts over dashboards, but dashboards are also nice. See example dashboard. This is the dashboard for the mobile team. You see that they have nice visualization. You see they have the world map, for instance. This is all nice. I think that you can use it. They have a lot, a lot of visualization. Take a second to look how many visualization they have. A lot, right? Mm -hmm. Having said that, alerts work for you while you're asleep and dashboard require you that you look into them all the time, right? So I prefer alerts. After you get an alert, you can open a dashboard to see what is the situation, right? So alerts come first and then dashboards. Let's see how do we add alerts. In Tabula, you, you, we usually use Sensu for alerts. Do you know what Sensu is? Anybody? Yes? Good. So this is an elastic based check and we can do the same check with Cousteau. You see what happens that if we go to backstage and ask for Yahoo Japan API call and we get status, HTTP status over 100 at least, and we get 50 of them in the last 10 minutes, a PD will be created for the media on call team. Can you use that for all front page? Yes. Um, how is Grafana can be integrated as well? Can we Good put question. the data? Good question. Would I ask questions? I will answer you shortly. <laughs> By the way, Sensu, if you don't know it, workflow automation for monitoring. Before I'm answering your question, I want to answer, I want to show something to June. You know, this is especially for you. If you want to work in your Jupyter environment, uh, Microsoft added something called KQL Magic. And actually, uh, Chris and uh, Andrew, this is might also interest you because it's like a flow of events that you usually do. So you just import something and you add a connection string and you run your queries one by one and your visualization, and you have everything in the same place. Does this uh, record all the queries that we've made over time? Yeah. Oh. Okay, okay. It's a notebook. So you remember the 15, the error that we had in front page a week ago? The true story? So this is how I will tackle it if I will use the data science features. I will create a time, I will create it an error, a graph like in the previous example, and it will be much faster, less, uh, less than one second, because I'm using the time series function, make series function, you see it, it's very, very fast. And then I will, call the auto clustering data science function and it will tell me in in two minutes that newsroom was affected and it happens in Chicago and this is the host. 
So I don't need those all four steps. I just need to run one query. <laughs> and I can do it with diff patterns also. You give the diff patterns good period, bad period, and it, it creates the, and it identifies the difference, anomaly detection. June, interesting? Yes, interesting. Good. Now, this is especially for a lady that asked about that, Cousteau and Grafana, and the, and the answer is, yes, we do. Wow. <laughs> I didn't put the wow here. I didn't put the wow here. <laughs> Would I already see this slide? It's staging it for you. <laughs> so that's a summary. If you didn't get, catch everything, it's okay because you can know where to find me. You have online resources in Brain. You saw how easy it is to run queries. Uh, you remember that alerts are better than dashboards. You can have beautiful dashboards, but alerts is the money time. And you have built-in data science for people that want to experiment the wisdom of the machine. Okay? And always remember these guys, your mentors. Mm -hmm. And thank you, guys.